of what they ultimately believe is the Masonic uh, deity, what they call the generating principle of life. You know, they wear the square and compass, and in the center is a G. You see it on the Masonic lodges where they have the square and compass with the G. Uh, some Masons will tell you it means the geometric, uh, uh, the geometry of the universe, or it means God. Actually, their own books say it's the generating principle of life that uh, the compass or the square represents the female and the compass coming down upon her represents the male that impregnates the female. And this generating principle, the male organ, is what brings immortality in life. You see, when they talk about immortality, uh, they are talking about uh, recreating life through uh, the sexual act. And this is what they are covering with the white lambskin apron. This is why a woman can never be a mason. She does not have the generating principle of life, which they proudly wear on their lapel as the square and compass and the G. Freemasonry uses Egyptian pagan symbols quite often, and we can see that. And one that comes to mind is the obelisk. The obelisk is a um, tall pillar in stone, tapered and square in section with a pyramidion on top. And that was used among the Egyptians as a resurrection symbol. And the idea was it was actually a phallic symbol. It stood tall and erect and it was used to procreate and one was resurrected through one's offspring, and that was the argument. Well, the same thing applies today, and we find that where Freemasons are buried, for instance, very often it'll be a obelisk that's used as a grave marker. Uh, Sir John A. MacDonald, first Prime Minister of Canada, or um, George Washington, first President of the United States, their grave markers both contain uh, obelisks, and sometimes even the obelisk will even contain the um, compass and square to indicate quite clearly where they're coming from. But can this really be true? It seems incredible that Freemasonry, this system of morality, may actually be veiled paganism, and only lightly veiled at that. The point within a circle is one of the more prominent Masonic symbols. Past Grand Master Albert Mackey teaches in his Symbolism of Freemasonry, page 353, the point within a circle is derived from sun worship and is in reality of phallic origin. It is a symbol of the universe, the sun being represented by the point, while the circumference is the universe. Mackey states further in his Manual of the Lodge, page 56, The phallus was an imitation of the male generative organ. It was represented usually by a column, which was surmounted by a circle at its base. The point within a circle was intended by the ancients as a type of the prolific powers of nature, which they worshipped under the united form of the active, or male, principle, and the passive or female principle. Paganism recognized and worshipped these powers as the creative force in nature. Albert Pike was Grand Commander of Scottish Rite Freemasonry in the 1800s. From his book, Morals and Dogma, The sun and moon represents the two grand principles of all generations, the active and passive, the male and female. Both shed their light upon their offspring, the blazing star, or Horus. These Masonic authorities agree that the symbols of Freemasonry are occultic and derived from paganism. The alleged occultic rituals and symbolism that are central to Freemasonry were tremendously significant to me personally. I had been deeply involved in the many facets of the occult, including witchcraft, for a number of years. Witchcraft is the religion of paganism. It's the worship of the sun god and the moon goddess in various forms. I was involved in the occult for about 12 years. Steve Warren was a practicing time, member of a coven a of witches. For me. That is, I was uh, constantly on a day-to-day -day basis reading, searching, uh, as well as practicing arts such as divination, um, getting in contact with the dead through mediums, uh, tarot cards, crystal balls, um, everything that we would consider a cult I was involved in. There's a great deal of symbolism in witchcraft itself. Uh, many of the, the implements used have significance uh, in terms of, of natural elements such as the, the uh, wand representing air, the uh, thame, a sword representing fire, a chalice with water, or and a pentagram representing earth. And these were, would be combined in various manners in order to take advantage of the spiritual forces that were felt to be in operation at that particular time. And it was heavily ritualistic with the wearing of robes, 
uh, the drawing of magic circles, uh, the invoking of gods uh, to aid the practitioner, as well as um, just anything you would do, even if it was not in a formal ritual, always had something to do with ritual. Even if it was casting a spell, you would always light the candles, bring out the elements, uh, set up your altar. Some of the parallels between Freemasonry and witchcraft show such a similarity that it cannot possibly be coincidental. Similarities in ritual, wording, and symbolism are so close in several instances that it clearly suggests a common origin. To examine this possibility, I spoke with a number of former Masons and compared their Blue Lodge initiations with the experiences of former occultists. In the initiation in Freemasonry, we had to be recommended by another Mason. Well, in order to join witchcraft, you have to be first screened you have to be recommended by somebody currently in witchcraft. Well, when I was initiated, I was blindfolded and bound by a rope, and on your bare chest was thrust the point of a spear. In witchcraft, we were initiated through a, uh, a very involved ritual, uh, initiation ceremony, uh, wherein the uh, candidate was led uh, blindfolded, uh, bound by a rope, uh, to the edge of uh, the uh, magic circle. And the rope is around your neck and you're led forward. And up front, in the eastern end of the building, is a person who's a worshipful master. And you kneel down before him as if he were a god. You were met uh, by the uh, high priest or high priestess uh, at that time, usually with a sword uh, to your chest. When I went to enter the lodge, a sharp object was put to my left breast. And I was warned that should I reveal any of the secrets of Freemasonry uh, to know what to expect. When you're presented before the high priest, a sword is held against your chest and you actually take a blood oath promising to remain faithful to the secrets of witchcraft. Well, when you are in the room, this um, blindfold is taken away from you and this is a time when they say that you're coming from darkness into light. During the initiation ceremony, the, the initiate is led by the lieutenant of the uh, high priest and is challenged at the edge of the circle by someone saying, who goes there? And the answer is, one from the world of darkness. In masonry, the prayers are ended with, so mote it be. Oh, and one of the other aspects of, uh, or distinctives of the craft was that we would always end any spell or ritual where we released the power, this is where the power was released with the word so mote it be. I was intrigued to discover that witchcraft and Freemasonry had so much in common. However, in white witchcraft, followers dismiss the biblical concept of Lucifer. Freemasonry goes so far as to actually call Lucifer God. In the words of sovereign pontiff of universal Freemasonry, Albert Pike, yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately, Adonai, the Hebrew god of the Bible, is also God. And the true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai. But Lucifer, god of light and god of good, is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the god of darkness and evil. Listen to the words of 33rd degree Mason Manley P. Hall. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply this energy. Of the literally millions of Masons worldwide, how many of them are actually aware of the true meaning of the Masonic symbols? The answer is very few. Since most Masons never go past the third degree of the Blue Lodge, the, the rank of Master Mason, the vast majority of them never discover what they're involved in. And they never will discover what Freemasonry is all about unless they venture into the higher levels of the Scottish Rite or the York Rite. In fact, they're not just ignorant, they're deliberately misled by their superiors in the Lodge. In the words of Masonry's own authority, Albert Pike, the blue degrees are but the outer court or portico of the temple. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations 
It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine that he understands them. Many Masons go through the first three degrees, become a master Mason, and they just quit there, thinking that this is just a nice fraternal organization. And they do not realize that their own leaders have consciously lied and deceived to them because they do not want them to know the true teachings of Masonry. I went in there um, with all good intentions, um, thinking I was uh, entering to, you know, into a, 